I'm uploading this video on Halloween, October 31st, the year 2020, three days before the election. So, I am speaking to the post-election future from the pre-election past. Um, this video will be unlisted, and I will set it to go live after the election. And if I am correct, Joe Biden will be the winner of that election. Uh, that is my prediction. Why won't I let this video go live before the election? Is it because I'm just playing it safe, and if Trump wins, I will never let this video go live? That's a perfectly fair assumption to make. But I actually explained the real reason four years ago. You see, one week after Donald Trump took office, I made a video called How Manipulated Are You?, and in that video, I showed how various forms of propaganda work and also showed how some people worked against their own best interests in the election. These are mistakes that I'm now seeing Trump's side make. Only they're making these mistakes far more egregiously than the Hillary Clinton supporters did to the point of outright deceiving their own side in a very very negative way. Now, in that video, I strongly criticized Rachel Maddow for making analysis videos that explain how Trump has a zero chance of winning, and I questioned the point of such videos. All they do is foster complacency in the voters who are with you and inspire the voters who are against you. I questioned the cost-benefit analysis. It's a deficit. There is no benefit. There is only cost. When you do that, you're only helping the other side. The Trump 2020 landslide red wave movement was an utter juggernaut, perpetuated in the extreme, even by Trump himself. And it was all very counterproductive for the Republicans. That's why I'm making this video live after the election, because you never want to interrupt your opponent when they're making a mistake. Or how does it go? Never murder a man while he's committing suicide. Now, the last thing I would want to do is put this piece of analysis out there for them while they still have time to correct for their mistake. Not that I think my video would make would realistically um, make such a difference, but if even the chance is there, uh, I'm not going to take it. If you didn't learn from the mistakes of people like Rachel Maddow, then frankly, you deserve to lose. Almost all of the people who I've seen express extreme confidence that Trump will win the election, including Trump himself, base their analysis on anecdotes, which is an incredibly flawed methodology. Hell, it's not even a methodology. They see a Trump rally with thousands of people, and then they see a Biden event with a couple dozen, and think that means something. Any other year, that would mean something, but we're in the middle of a pandemic in which only Biden's side is taking precautions. Biden is doing social distancing and limiting the number of people at his events. Meanwhile, Trump brags about squeezing as many people in as will fit. Even when you see thousands of people at a rally, consider the oceans of voters who aren't at that rally. Those rallies, as large as they are, represent only a tiny fraction of the electorate. An electorate that is ready, willing, able, and even anxious to vote for Biden. The crowd size anecdotes are not only meaningless, but they hurt Trump's cause by giving a false impression. When you're fighting in a war, you want a 100% accurate view of the battlefield. Trump's side did not have that. I would never put a Biden sign on my lawn. I would never put a Biden sticker on my car. I would never wave a Biden flag if they even make Biden flags for crying out loud. 
I'm not even all that thrilled about voting for Biden, even though I did so nice and early on October 22nd. But there's a guy out there who loves Trump. He has 20 Trump signs on his front lawn, 15 Trump bumper stickers on his truck, and two big Trump flags waving from the bed of that same truck. One of those flags being the Rambo Trump holding the M60 machine gun. Now, in the end, my determined yet unthrilled vote for Biden will count every bit as much as that feverishly enthusiastic vote for Trump. And in the end, the reality is that Trump is not Rambo. He's an obese draft dodger. Details like that are important to know and understand if you wanted Trump to win, because denying reality is why Trump lost. Your denial about who Trump is and what Trump has done is why Trump has lost.